Let's get ready to mortgage. He is the prince of programs, guru of guidelines, master of matrixes. He puts the fun in funding. Please welcome Mark, Mr. Mortgage, I tell. All right, all right. My name is Mark Itell, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show, and Dom, my producer, and I do this little mortgage mashup every week right here. Same bat time, same bat channel. So we are super excited that you're joining us. And hey, we've got an awesome show lined up for you this week. I know real estate is top of mind with a lot of people. We're getting a ton of questions during the week about, you know, what's going to happen Interest rates are rising. Housing prices are increasing. Inflation is here. We're entering a recession. Oh, my God, the sky is falling. What is going to happen? So uh, we're going to dig into all of that. Uh, We've had a a, a lot of really, really good questions this week. So I've made a note of all of that. And our goal, as always, is that you walk away from this uh, 50 minutes with us uh, more educated and informed so you can make better decisions about mortgage and real estate for you and your family. So thank you so much for joining us. Like I said, we're going to cover a lot of those topics and we're going to get to your questions too. Um, As always, you can text or email or I almost said fax your questions. Shows you how old I am if I'm expecting you to fax your questions in. But yeah, you can either call or text them into the Anytime Hotline, which is 561 291 Eight five six nine, and we'll get to them during the show. Or visit the website www.mr.mortgage, and you can submit your questions there too. So, as I mentioned, there's a a lot going on in real estate uh, this week. So, we're going to arm you with the necessary information so you can kind of move forward and find the best opportunities out there for you and your family. But uh, we're going to jump right in. I know. Things are crazy, crazy out there. I mean, it seems like overnight interest rates jumped from the threes to the fives. And I know it's got a lot of people unsettled. Um, If you're a listener of the show or you follow the Mr. Mortgage show on Facebook, this isn't a surprise. You've known that it was coming. I think the big surprise is how quickly it happened. Um, We were anticipating rate increases going all the way back to the end of 2021. We anticipated At the beginning of Q4 in 2021, we'd start to see some incremental rate increases to offset the inflation. But remember, back then the Fed said, oh, don't worry, this is transitory. And I actually had to look up transitory because that's not a word I had heard recently outside of, you know, women swimming in college. But I just found it interesting that uh, that they were surprised that this really stuck. And I think because of that, they waited to start to make moves in the uh, market as far as raising interest rates and then bleeding off the balance sheet, which is really having the big impact on mortgage rates. So I kind of feel like, remember that movie, Driving Miss Daisy? At least in that movie, Miss Daisy was in the backseat. I kind of feel like Jerome Powell is Miss Daisy and, and he's driving the car, which is making us a little nervous because they've waited so long to correct There is the danger of them overcorrecting, but we're going to dig into that, what effect all that is having on the market, both short term and then give you some great insight as to how to use what's going on um, short term to plan for some long term strategic moves in real estate. So, yeah, uh, inflation, eight and a half percent was announced um, this week, year over year, which um, I think it's probably more like 10. To be honest with you, I was surprised it was only eight and a half. But uh, nevertheless, scorching inflation. We haven't experienced this since 1981, uh, which has some people concerned because in that time period back in the 80s, we saw, you know, inflation and interest rates really jump. Um, and we'll talk about the uh, the correlation between interest rates, appreciation and inflation as we go deeper into the show. But yeah, um, that was big news this week, eight and a half percent inflation year over year. And it got me thinking about 1981, because that's the last time that we've had inflation uh, moving this quickly was 1981. And usually I'll do some type of music analogy, but I honestly was kind of disappointed with the music of 1981 when I did the research. So I looked at the movies of 1981 and I've got my list here somewhere. I'm a little embarrassed. It's not right on top, but uh, 1981 Porky's came out. I don't know if you guys remember that teenage comedy. I probably shouldn't talk much about that, Um, but Porky's came out in 1981. Chariots of Fire 
came out in 1981, probably one of the most iconic music scores of all time. And I don't have my list. I darn it. I thought I had it here with my show prep, but um, also two stripes. And that was one of my favorite movies of all time. I love, love, love Bill Murray. And I'm going to have to do this from memory because I was looking for the list because I printed this out. And there was a quote in stripes where he was trying to get everybody to prepare for the gun presentation that they were going to do at, at graduation so that they could move out of basic training. And I'm doing this from memory, so bear with me. But he said something to the effect that he was getting them all excited and committed to this training. We're Americans, right? And he said, you know what that means? That means our forefathers were kicked out of every decent country in the world. We're the wretched refuse, if I remember correctly, we're mutts. So we, I take from that, that, that comedy, that little uh, spiel that, you know, Americans get it done. Um, we're, we're, we may not be the, 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 the first choice. Our forefathers got kicked out of every decent country in the world. We may, may not, may not be your first choice, but we can usually buckle down and bootstrap it up and get it done. And, you know, we can cry about the interest rates, we can cry about inflation, or we can just suck it up and find the opportunity in this market. And the good news is, as we go through the show, you'll you'll find that there is opportunity in this market. There always is. Um, housing typically does very well in cycles of inflation and in a recession. So I pulled a chart I'll share with you real quick, um, kind of a sneak peek about what we're going to get into. But in the 70s, housing appreciated for the entire decade at 9.9%, while inflation was 7.1%. In the 80s, they were more closely paired with inflation at 56 and housing at 55 In the 90s, housing actually um, exceeded appreciation once, or, uh, inflation once again, uh, inflation rate of 3%, housing appreciation at 4 And then in the 2000s, which um, the end of that decade started the recessionary period of the housing bubble burst, which may skew these numbers, but inflation at 2.6% and housing appreciation at 2.3. And then in the 2010s, inflation outpaced appreciation as the bubble burst and we were recovering. Housing only moved at 1.8% while appreciation was almost five. And then since then, Housing appreciation has scorched inflation. I mean, in in the 2020 decade, it was 9.2 for housing appreciation with only a 1.4% uh, inflationary rate. And then 2021, it's not even fair because COVID and the, the cheap money really, really buoyed housing. But housing at 18% um, average with inflation at 6.8%. So my point in that is, you know, while Chicken Little is out there, running up and down the street, telling us that the sky is falling. And, you know, consumers are scared. You don't know whether it's a good time to buy, it's a good time to sell. Should I refi, pay everything off and just hunker down because the end of the world's coming? Or, you know, should I light myself on fire and run naked down the street? There's a lot of people who just don't know the answer to that question. So the good news is, historically, housing does very well against inflation and, more importantly, against a recession. As I think... Just about everybody has agreed that we're moving into a recessionary cycle. I personally believe we're already there. I think we're in the beginning of a recession, but typically they don't call it until, you know, we're into it for a year or so. That's another thing I find interesting. We react to headlines and headlines are the evidence of something that already happened. I think it's a better move to take the data and make educated forecasts because if you're checking the weather and you go outside and you touch the ground and it's wet, that means it's already rained. That's kind of the headline, right? It already happened. Inflation uh, rate has already happened. These are, they're reporting things that we can no longer do anything about. But a forecast is what we anticipate is going to happen. And that gives us the opportunity to really plan, use the data that we have at hand to make the best decisions moving forward. So, 
you know, there's always that one guy in the neighborhood who waits until the last minute to put his shutters up for the hurricane. And that's the guy that's not using the data. He's just waiting for the first tree to blow over in his front yard. And then he's going to race to Lowe's or Home Depot and try to fight somebody for that last sheet of plywood. So anyway, we're going to dive into all of your questions during the, uh, the next segments of the show. We're going to cover all those topics and make sure you're not one of those people who are lighting themselves on fire and running naked down the street. So hang in there with us. We're going to be right back after this short break and we'll dig into your questions. Hey, it's Mark Itell, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show. You hear me all the time talking about the need to have the very best team representing you in a real estate transaction. And that starts with a really great agent. If you've got a great agent, that's awesome. But if you don't, check out www.reallygreatagents.com. There you'll find the best of the best, regardless of the city they work in or the brokerage they work for. www.reallygreatagents.com. www.reallygreatagents.com. Here's another five-star review. My wife and I own a small business. And the way our accountant file our taxes, we don't show much income on tax returns. Because of this, it looks as if we don't make the money. This was a problem for our bank when we applied for a mortgage. But not for Mark. He verifies our income by using our monthly bank statements. Mark and his Mr. Mortgage team made a big difference for me. Yes, I am happy to recommend Mr. Mortgage Mark. It's not every day that you need an appraisal, whether it's for a divorce settlement, estate planning, or maybe you're appealing a tax assessment, or you just want to make sure you have adequate coverage in your property insurance. When you need a certified appraisal, turn to my friends at soflappraisal.com. That's soflappraisal.com. Peter and his team have been appraising properties here in South Florida for decades. soflappraisal.com. And tell him you heard this on the Mr. Mortgage Show. Are inflation and everyday expenses eating into your retirement income? Maybe you've considered a reverse mortgage and have unanswered questions, like, Do I still own my property? Can the bank kick me out? What happens when I die? Can I still leave my house to my kids? These are all great questions. Visit www.moreaboutreverse.com to learn more. That's www.moreaboutreverse.com. www.moreaboutreverse.com. Welcome back to the Mr. Mortgage Show. Call us now, 561-291-8569. All right, I am Mark Itell, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show, and you heard the announcer. You can get your questions to us on the Anytime Hotline at 561 561- 2918569 that's 5612918569 and that's truly any time when Dom and I are not in the studio doing the show that pushes to my office so someone will be happy to get you in touch with me if you have questions during the week and actually got a call on a Wednesday night and went to voicemail but it was a Wednesday night at 10 o'clock so somebody hit the anytime hotline while listening to the podcast which was Super cool. And you can find the replays of the show on all the podcast platforms. So you can just Google the Mr. Mortgage show. Um, you'll find us just about anywhere podcasts are served up. And, is, you know, obviously we're on the iHeart app and you can check us out there. But we are everywhere. And we just put together the uh, new Facebook page, The Mr. Mortgage Show. And we're going to start dropping stats and a little bit of a deeper dive during the week of all of these um, subjects, because some of them really do merit uh, a, a longer and deeper conversation than we're able to, to do on the air. So uh, check out the Mr. Mortgage Show on Facebook, and you can just go up to the Facebook search bar and type in the Mr. Mortgage Show and we'll pop up. We're putting some pretty interesting data up there also. It's a good way to follow us and stay in touch. Uh, during the week uh, in between the show. So anyway, we're going to move right into the question segment. Um, Wait a minute. I just saw somebody on fire naked running down the street. That must be somebody from the first segment who doesn't have this information yet. So hang in there. We're going to put all your worries at ease during uh, during the show this morning. So, hey, Dom, what do we have teed up for questions? All righty. Jesse just called us with this one. She's asking, I've been renting my townhouse with my boyfriend. We're breaking up and I want to buy the place from our landlord. My question is, I was giving my my boyfriend the rent and he paid it out of his account. Will this hurt my chances for the mortgage since technically he has the rent history? 
Hey, Jesse, that's a great question. So, um, yeah, sorry or congratulations on the breakup. Not sure uh, what's in order there, but um, not an uncommon situation. So first, let me congratulate you on trying to buy your place. Um, I think it's super cool that uh, that you're trying to uh, jump into ownership and build some equity, especially after renting. But to answer your question, it's not uncommon that the, that roommates, typically one roommate will pay the other and that individual will, will pay the rent. Um, and to answer your question, it will not hurt you. And you're right. Technically he does have the rental history. So if he's, you know, doing a bank statement loan, he can show payment history, but there is in the mortgage process, uh, we're going to do what's called a verification of rent. And the landlord is going to confirm that you're a tenant of said property and that the rent of said property has been paid on time for you know, whatever the period of time that you've been uh, in the prior, or if you've made late payments, they're going to disclose that too. It's a standard form that they have to complete as a landlord. So, and hopefully you were paying him with a check so that you can document your payment to him. Um, That's also helpful too. And maybe that's a bit of a pro tip for anybody out there. If you are in a roommate situation and it happens a lot in the hospitality industry where you know, you've got a couple of people who work at the same bar or restaurant that are um, sharing an apartment and they earn primarily cash. So there's a lot of tip money. And if my portion of the rent is $600 and I'm, you know, I have $600 cash I haven't yet put in the bank, I might just give that to my roommate to make the, the rent payment, which is awesome. Rent gets paid, but I have no documentation of my housing payment. So whether you're splitting a mortgage with somebody or rent with somebody, it's always better to do it by giving them a, ca- uh, a check if possible. Or you can use Cash App or Zelle or PayPal. I know a lot of people use the payment apps, but anything that's documentable. So if you want to you know, avoid putting a ton of cash in your bank account for whatever reason, just make the deposit uh, that you need to cover that rent payment so that you are documenting your rent, uh, your payments. I think that's super helpful. So I hope that helps. It's not going to hurt you. Um, the fact that he's been making the payments, uh, the verification of rent that your landlord will fill out for your underwriter, um, will get that information for you. So, and I'm happy to help if you don't have a mortgage company already, we are always um, standing by and happy to answer any, any of your questions. You can use that anytime hotline, 561-291-8569, as I mentioned um, during the week. And hey, Jesse, while I'm thinking about this, I just want to throw out um, kind of a a, a clap up the ladies, if you will. Um, There's a term I hear all the time, giving you your flowers. Even though I'm not giving you flowers, I'm congratulating you. So I saw some interesting data, and you'll remember from the National Woman's Week, I think it was, or Woman's Day, we actually did a show that week where we called out women in real estate and making purchases. So a friend of mine, Brian Stevens, does the National Real Estate Post daily. And if you guys aren't following Brian, Brian is a rock star. Um, He's the right amount of hangover, uh, sarcasm, and data to deliver mortgage news on a daily basis. The guy's a rock star. So I checked out the National Real Estate Post yesterday, and I was looking at Brian's uh, most recent uh, release, and he covered the same data that we covered uh, a few weeks back for National uh, Women's Week. He just did a better job of it because he is truly a pro. But he looked at the 10 most expensive cities in the country, and the number one city naturally is New York, followed by L.A., and then Boston, San Francisco. I won't go any deeper down the list because it starts to get boring. But what I found super interesting was the minimum, uh, or I'm sorry, the monthly payment as a percentage of the income of a woman, single woman versus a single man in New York City, the amount of that income to qualify for a mortgage would be 117% of a woman's income, single woman in New York City, or 88% of a single man's average income. So super interesting that women are, I'm going somewhere with this, so hang in there with me. Women are earning less than men in most categories. In the cheapest cities, the most affordable cities, they're led by Detroit, Oklahoma City, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Now, oh, actually, that's kind of interesting that two are in Oklahoma. But anyway, the monthly payment as a percentage of income for women in the Detroit Metro is 11% and for men is 10. So closer 
in the um, affordable cities as far as income. Here's what's super cool, though. Not super cool that ladies don't earn as much as men, because you certainly should. But you women, single women in particular, are stepping up and buying real estate. And I find that super interesting. So here's some statistics that are very recent. So 60% of home buyers were married couples. 19, almost 20% were single females. Followed all the way down to a barely 9% were single males and unmarried couples. And then 2% were other. And uh, I'm not sure how to define other, but um, single males made up barely 9% and single females almost 20%. So sisters are getting it done with less. And that was kind of what we talked about during National Women's Week. I thought it's super cool. So going back to Jesse buying the apartment that her and her boyfriend had been renting, I'm just clapping Jesse up because that's another example of a lady um, seizing the opportunity to buy some real estate. And to finish out on Brian's report, when he asked the um, the professionals, they said more and more single women have been buying homes and they suspect it will continue through the uh, 2020s. And basically, they're taking their future into their own hands. They're not waiting for a man um, to marry and get the white picket fence. They see the opportunity in owning real estate and building equity. So even in this market, it makes sense to buy uh, real estate because homes are still appreciating and interest rates are still relatively affordable historically. I mean, a rate in the fives historically is amazing. Coming from the threes, it's scary. In the fives historically is an amazing opportunity. And we're, we're going to get into supply and demand and where the demand is coming from and why I don't think this is a real estate bubble. And we'll talk about the kind of the caution spots in the market as we get deeper into the show. But I just wanted to throw that out there, that women, in spite of everything, earning less and appreciation and higher interest rates are still getting it done in this housing market. So super cool, Jesse. I uh, congratulate you on buying your place. Um, and I hope bigger and brighter things are in your future. So if you have any questions, give us a shout, 561-291-8569. That's 561-291-8569 on the Anytime Hotline. Or check out the website, www.mr.mortgage. Never a .com. Just type in mr.mortgage and you'll find us online. Hey, it's Mark Itell, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show. You hear me all the time talking about the need to have the very best team representing you in a real estate transaction. And that starts with a really great agent. If you've got a great agent, that's awesome. But if you don't, check out www.reallygreatagents.com. There you'll find the best of the best, regardless of the city they work in or the brokerage they work for. www.reallygreatagents.com. www.reallygreatagents.com. Here's another five-star review. We started our loan with a different company. They said we were approved, but at the last minute they told us there was a problem. I still don't know what went wrong, but thankfully our real estate agent told us about Mark. I was pretty stressed, but it's the perfect house so we gave Mark a shot. He got it done. I'm not sure what was different, but I don't really care. We even got a better interest rate and with less money out of pocket than the first guy quoted us. It was a great surprise. Yes, I'm happy to recommend Mark and his Mr. Mortgage team. It's not every day that you need an appraisal, whether it's for a divorce settlement, estate planning, or maybe you're appealing a tax assessment, or you just want to make sure you have adequate coverage in your property insurance. When you need a certified appraisal, turn to my friends at soflappraisal.com. That's soflappraisal.com. Peter and his team have been appraising properties here in South Florida for decades. Soflappraisal.com. And tell him you heard this on the Mr. Mortgage Show. Are inflation and everyday expenses eating into your retirement income? Maybe you've considered a reverse mortgage and have unanswered questions like, Do I still own my property? Can the bank kick me out? What happens when I die? Can I still leave my house to my kids? These are all great questions. Visit www.moreaboutreverse.com to learn more. That's www.moreaboutreverse.com. www.moreaboutreverse.com. Welcome back 
to the Mr. Mortgage Show. Call us now, 561-291-8569. All right, we are back. My name is Mark Itell, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show. Dom, my producer, and I do this every week right here on the same channel, on the same same bat time, same bat channel. But, uh, yeah, thanks so much for joining us. And shoot us your questions, the Anytime Hotline, 561-291-8569. That's 561-291-8569. Or visit the website, www.mr.mortgage. And I encourage anybody who's surfing the web to check out the Facebook page. That's the Mr. Mortgage Show on Facebook. Uh, You'll find some pretty interesting articles and some of the data that we use um, to research uh, pre show so you know where some of this is coming from if you want a deeper dive on anything. So I know it's crazy, crazy real estate market out there, and we're trying to give you the info, the advice, and the strategies that just make you that much smarter and better prepared to make decisions uh, for you and your family moving forward. So, as always, we like to take your questions. I know there's a ton of them around this whole you know, real estate bubble and the crash and all of that. But um, we're also going to answer the questions that are coming in to the hotline. So let me throw it over to Dom and see what we've got teed up question wise. All right. We just got this one from Danny. Uh, Danny's asking, does my credit score or amount of down payment affect my interest rate? My brother just closed on his house Tuesday with a 4.25% rate, but my bank just quoted me with 5.5% percent yesterday can you explain the difference hey danny that's a great question and thanks dom for getting that one on the air because i I tell you what here's the thing and it's super frustrating when things are moving this fast and i have this conversation with real estate agents a lot of the time because um you know danny you've got the perfect scenario to use to explain this because you're saying your brother closed just a few days ago and he got you know what you perceive to be a much better rate here's the thing That rate that your brother closed with on Tuesday was most likely locked at very minimum 30 days ago, but most likely 45 or 60 days ago. So as a standard practice, when rates are moving this quickly up, we're doing extended uh, rate locks for every new pre-qualified buyer. So that five and a half percent that your bank is quoting you is most likely today's rate for that program. It's not most likely. That's what's happening. You're looking at your brother's rate. He was able to lock it and take it off the shelf. Remember that Walmart analogy that we used? uh, What did we call layaway? He took that rate and put it on layaway 45 days ago, 60 days ago, whatever it was. So he that's not Tuesday's rate, my man. That's February's rate. And that's the challenge when you're looking at something like that. And I get it. It's super confusing. And I'm not knocking you for not knowing that because that's a fantastic question that I get a lot of times. And you'd be surprised how many real estate agents I talk to who say, hey, I just had a closing last week and the rate was much lower. What's going on? So I just I think that's a part of the business that we're not that aware of. So you're you, he most likely locked that rate. And I would encourage you to ask him because I bet you it was 60 days ago. Um, that he locked the rate. So anyway, uh, that's the scenario that I'm trying to explain is oftentimes by the time it gets to the closing table, it's that weather analogy. It happened a long time ago. It's already over. They took that rate off the table, you know, 45 or 60 days ago. So happy to um, answer any questions you have around that. And if you want a competitive quote against that five and a half, I'm happy to quote you. But to answer your question, it's not specific to, you know, credit score and program specifically, although that does have something to do with it. So if your credit score or your down payment doesn't meet a particular program, you may need to, let's say, go from a conventional uh, loan, which is a Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac um, uh, 30-year fixed rate loan, to, let's say, an FHA loan. An FHA loan will allow for you know, a slightly lower credit score, a higher debt to income ratio. Um, So yes, credit score and down payment could affect your program, but it's not going to make that wild jump in interest rate that you just referred to. Um, What may significantly impact rate is let's say you're using one of those um, bank statement loan programs that we talk about all the time. If you're self-employed and you're unable to produce tax returns or, you know, W-2s or pay stubs, to support an income necessary to qualify, 
But you can clearly see by your bank statements that you're running, you know, ample funds through your account. You make the money. You just don't show the money when it comes to tax time. Um, A bank statement loan traditionally has a higher interest rate associated with it because, you know, there's a little more risk on the lender's side of things. So if you're talking about a very different loan program, then there will be some difference in interest rate and down payment requirements. But the way that I understood your question as, as Dom was sharing it with us, um, you're talking almost about the same program, the difference only being the time that your brother has had that, that interest rate under, uh, under a lock. So hopefully that helps if there's specifics that you have a question, um, uh, regarding that interest rate down payment credit score, give us a shout five six one two nine one eight five six nine or shoot shoot back more details via text. I'll I'll go into it uh, more on the air if if you'd like me to, um, or if you want to just talk to somebody, give us a call five six one two nine one eight five six nine is the anytime uh, hotline or visit the website Mister Dot Mortgage. And uh, hopefully that clears that up. I know it's a little confusing and certainly frustrating when your buddy got a better rate than you. Um, you don't get to you don't get to win the the rate brag uh, at the beer cooler um, during the weekend barbecue. But uh, that's most likely what happened is he he locked a uh, forty five or sixty days ago. So we'll keep this train rolling. What what uh, do we have teed up, Tom? Do we have any other questions? We do. We have Scott who emailed us this one. Scott's asking, you always talk about finding the opportunity in the market with rates, housing costs, inflation all rising. Where's the opportunity? Hey, 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 Scott, that's a great question. And um, it's sometimes it's hard to find the opportunity because it's such a pessimistic news cycle for real estate right now. Everybody's kind of, you know, it's like the pinata. Everybody's taking a swing at this thing, waiting for it to burst. And they think, you know, the housing bubble is going to burst and it's, it's clickbait to talk about interest rates in the housing bubble right now. So I know finding the um, opportunity sometimes can be a challenge when all of the news appears to be um, bad news. But here, let me ask, I'm just going to throw some qu- quick questions out at, at you. And hopefully this helps you maybe think about things uh, differently. And uh, that was Scott. So, hey, Scott, if you currently own a home and you believe that interest rates are going to continue to rise and you have a lot of high debt credit, and I don't know that you do, I'm just asking, asking questions. Do you have car payment, boat payment, RV payment, credit cards that you might be able to take some of the equity out of your property and pay all of that uh, all of that debt down and lower your overall monthly expenditures so that you're in a better position to weather the recession? That's one opportunity in this market. A lot of people have accumulated 10, 12 years worth of appreciation in two and a half years. So there's a lot of money there that's sitting there. That's the house's money um, that you didn't do anything other than make a great buying decision uh, to accumulate. So that's an opportunity. If you believe people not being able to afford to buy a first home because rent continues to increase, maybe buying a rental property is an opportunity because certainly as more people get priced out of home ownership, that's going to comp- uh, continue to generate a larger pool of renters, maybe capitalize on that and buy an investment property. And you can pull some of the equity out of your property to go buy an investment property. You can use the DSCR loan that we always talk about as a first time investor. So another place that you might find opportunity. And I'd love to talk you through that because you can do a home equity line to pull the equity out, put the down payment against the the rental property. And we don't even have to look at your personal income if the property cash flows. I'm working with a client right now who's buying a fourplex um, because they see the opportunity in rental income. So there's opportunity everywhere. I talked about my friend who pulled some cash out of his property and he's buying down in Ecuador. And I don't know that you want to move to Ecuador, But there's opportunity in every market. And if you have specifics, I'd love to talk you through some of them um, and just have that dialogue. So give us a shout at 561-291-8569. That's the Anytime Hotline, 561-291-8569. And you hear the sirens. Maybe they're chasing that naked burning man down the street. But uh, we're going to be right back for more questions after this break. Uh, I'm Mark Itell, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show. Sit tight. We'll be back in two minutes. Hey, it's Mark Itell, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show. 
You hear me all the time talking about the need to have the very best team representing you in a real estate transaction. And that starts with a really great agent. If you've got a great agent, that's awesome. But if you don't, check out www.reallygreatagents.com. There you'll find the best of the best, regardless of the city they work in or the brokerage they work for. www.reallygreatagents.com www.reallygreatagents.com Here's another five-star review. We kept our business above water with credit cards during the pandemic. I'm glad we did. Business is better than ever. But I didn't want to be a slave to those credit card payments. I called Mark about the rec loan he advertises. Long story short, we did a rec refinance and paid off everything, even the car. Now we only have the mortgage payment. We're saving a bunch every month. Yes, we are happy to recommend Mark and the Mr. Mortgage team. It's not every day that you need an appraisal, whether it's for a divorce settlement, estate planning, or maybe you're appealing a tax assessment, or you just want to make sure you have adequate coverage in your property insurance. When you need a certified appraisal, turn to my friends at soflappraisal.com. That's soflappraisal.com. Peter and his team have been appraising properties here in South Florida for decades. soflappraisal.com. And tell him you heard this on the Mr. Mortgage Show. Are inflation and everyday expenses eating into your retirement income? Maybe you've considered a reverse mortgage and have unanswered questions, like, Do I still own my property? Can the bank kick me out? What happens when I die? Can I still leave my house to my kids? These are all great questions. Visit www.moreaboutreverse.com to learn more. That's www.moreaboutreverse.com. www.moreaboutreverse.com. Welcome back to the Mr. Mortgage Show. Call us now, 561-291-8569. All right, we are back. My name is Mark Itell. I host the Mr. Mortgage Show every week right here, same time, same channel. So thank you so much for joining us for this little mortgage mashup. And uh, Dom, my producer, and I do this uh, every week. So we're super excited that you're with us. Uh, We're going to do a rapid fire round of questions. I saw a bunch of questions come in during that last break. So I'm going to throw it right to Dom and we're going to get rolling. All right. We have Michelle just called with this one. She's asking, well, I remember President Biden talking about a $15,000 first time home buyer grant. What happened to that? Is something like that coming soon? Hey, uh, that I do remember that too, and um, there's no there's no short term um, there's no short term grant coming on the horizon. We don't see that. Um, and to be honest, I don't know that it's going to make it through Congress. And um, it's a great question. I just wouldn't wait on it. If you can do something in real estate now without waiting for the grant, um, then definitely jump into the market. But there are some grant programs out there. Uh, there's the SHIP program. That uh, will help with some down payment money. You can Google uh, DPA, which stands for down payment assistance, and then put in your county, not your city, but your county. Most of those funds are distributed on a county level. And uh, hopefully you find the information there. But um, I wouldn't necessarily wait on the government to rescue us from this, because typically what happens anytime there's there's a grant or um, a lower interest rate or some extension of credit the 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 housing pricing prices just race up to to that new level if there's fifteen thousand dollars of free money then everybody's got a fifteen thousand dollar down payment then the housing prices are just going to keep moving up to absorb that so check out the dpa programs online if you have questions hit us up you can find us online i'll be happy to direct you to someone that might may be able to help so hey dom what else do we have all right we have jamie who sent in a text uh, Jamie asked, can my parents co-sign for me if they already have a house with a mortgage? Hey, that's another great question. Um, yes, they can. So here's how all that works. Your parents would be considered a non-occupying co-borrower because they already own their home. And we do have to take all of their debt and all of their income into consideration. So sometimes it doesn't help because if they're carrying a lot of debt, they may not... Um, they may not have enough room in their ratios to actually help you qualify, but more often than not, it does help. And, um, we can certainly do that. We're going to have to fully underwrite them as well. So when you're having this conversation with your folks, it's not as simple as them, 
just signing. They're going to have to produce their bank statements. If they're self-employed, their tax returns, they're fully underwritten as well. And if they are willing to do it, you can certainly use your parents as non-occupying co-borrowers. And they can also gift you the down payment and um, help with the closing costs. So it's a great, great opportunity. We're seeing a lot of um, parents helping their children right now, especially we, we just mentioned it in the last segment. A lot of people have a ton of newfound equity wealth, and some people are utilizing that to help their kids get into properties. And they're pulling some of the, the equity out to uh, gift funds to their children, or in some instances, they're pulling enough equity out to pay cash for the property, and then they're selling the property to the children with um, with owner financing. So we're seeing more and more of that too, because some of these properties over the last you know four or five years have significantly um, increased in value, and there's a ton a ton of equity. So um, great question. Yes, your folks can uh, uh, be non occupying co-borrowers to help. So hopefully that helps more questions on that. Just give us a shout 561-291-8569. And I'm going to throw it back to Dom. Do we have anything else teed up over there? We do. We have Terry that just shot us this email. Terry's asking, this economy has me nervous. I like the idea of doing a refinance and paying everything off. But if home values go down, I don't want to lose my house because I owe more than it's worth. How does that work? That was Terry? Yes, that was Terry. Is he still on the phone? Uh, this was an email. Oh, okay. Hey, Terry, I I'd love to talk to you about that because if I'm if I'm understanding your correct your question correctly, your fear is that if property values go down and you owe more than the property's worth, that somehow that's going to cause you to lose the property. Which is a great question, and we do a lot of reverse mortgages, and that's a big question that people in the re- reverse mortgage space have is. With a reverse mortgage, the the um, balance is going up every month. So if property values go down, you know there's a there's a real concern that you're going to owe more than it's worth. So owing more than it's worth by itself is no um, reason to worry as far as having the note call due. Um, they're not going to call the note due on you just because property has depreciated and now you owe more than it's worth. So I think there is a a bit of a misconception because what happened in the real estate bubble crash um, or burst rather of, you know, what, 2010, 11, 12. I don't know. I try to blur all that out of my mind. Uh, most of you know that I've been in the business for a long time, started in 99. So I do remember those days. But um, a lot of people lost their properties back then, not because simply they owed more than it was worth, but because they couldn't actually afford the property. So if that was to happen, um, and I don't think it's going to happen. And you know what? We'll dig into that on the other side of this um next segment, but I'll give you a little more info on that and hopefully it'll answer some questions. But I'm just saying that because I don't think we're going to get into a situation where property values fall enough that you should be concerned that suddenly you owe more than it's worth because typically with a cash out refi, we're going to stop you at 80% of the value. So that means if you have a $500,000 house and you're using the rec loan to pay off all that debt, you're you know, probably not going to owe more than 400000 on that property and maybe even less. I don't know how much you have to pull out to pay everything down, which is an amazing strategy, by the way, if you believe the sky is truly falling and we're going into a recession. What a great opportunity to use some of that equity to cut your monthly expenses and really hunker down and grow vegetables in the backyard and weather this storm that you think's coming. But to further answer your question, Having the balance of the loan exceed the value, the the lender's not going to call the note due. There's nothing they can do about it. Um, There are several, several people who bought during the um, bubble and values went down significantly and they held the property and they're now back in profit. So the reality is you need a place, you need a place to go uh, home every night. So even if there is a bit of a downturn, if it's your forever home or your long-term home, I wouldn't be concerned about that. But to answer your question, the property value um, going down to the point that it's less than the home's value does not give the lender the right to foreclose. The only time the lender can come knock on your door and tell you you're in foreclosure is if you stop making the payments or you stop paying the taxes um, or the insurance on the property. So as long as you're able to make those payments, and a lot of people are doing that right now, it's interesting. Interesting. Um, I talked all. I talked to uh, Peter over at uh, SOFL Appraisal a lot, and the reason I talked to Peter is he has better data than all of us. So a busy real estate agent might close twenty, 
maybe 30, let's say 20, it's probably a realistic number, transactions a month. A really busy mortgage professional might close 20 or 30 transactions. I'm sorry, real estate agent, 20 or 30 transactions a year. A really busy mortgage broker might do 20 or 30 a month, which means you know we're seeing significantly more transactions. But the, the interesting thing is an appraiser sees 20 or 30, uh, a busy appraisal office, 20 or 30 a week. And so when I talk to Peter, I, I'm asking him, what is he seeing? Are you seeing more people that are trying to refi? Are you still seeing um, purchase business out there? What are, what are you seeing um, as an appraiser? Because he knows when he's going out, if it's a purchase or a refinance. And it was really interesting. I had a deep dive conversation with him uh, Wednesday of this week and 22 years appraising properties. He's got a really good handle on what he's talking about. So he told me when rates first moved up about a month or so ago, um, there was a little slowdown in purchase business. Refi business bumped. And now this week he is slammed like he was last year. And he said it's still skewed more heavily towards purchases, which I found fascinating because we're all saying it's a scary time to buy or refi because rates have gone up, but he's still seeing a robust uh, market. So I use his data because it's the, the, the most forward looking data. By the time it gets to the real estate agent or to me, it's already under contract and the decisions have already been made, but the appraiser is kind of on the front of the deal. So anyway, hopefully that's helpful, Terry. I hope that answers your question. Owing more than it's worth, I wouldn't be afraid of it. We'll dig into that on the other side of this. And it's certainly not giving the bank the ability to take the property from you. So on the other side of this break, we'll dive into more questions, but you can get those to us at 561-291-8569. That's the Anytime Hotline, 561-291-8569. Hey, it's Mark Itell, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show. You hear me all the time talking about the need to have the very best team representing you in a real estate transaction. And that starts with a really great agent. If you've got a great agent, that's awesome. But if you don't, check out www.reallygreatagents.com. There you'll find the best of the best, regardless of the city they work in or the brokerage they work for. www.reallygreatagents.com. www.reallygreatagents.com. Here's another five-star review. As a realtor, I have a bunch of mortgage brokers to choose from, but I prefer to work with Mark and his Mr. Mortgage team. In this crazy market, there is no room for error, especially on the mortgage side. Mark's team moves fast, keeps everybody in the loop, and makes things happen. They always give my clients a great deal and take the time to walk them through every step of the process. When you're considering a lender, I encourage you to talk to Mark Itell and the Mr. Mortgage team. It's not every day that you need an appraisal, whether it's for a divorce settlement, estate planning, or maybe you're appealing a tax assessment, or you just want to make sure you have adequate coverage in your property insurance. When you need a certified appraisal, turn to my friends at soflappraisal.com. That's soflappraisal.com. Peter and his team have been appraising properties here in South Florida for decades. soflappraisal.com. And tell them you heard this on the Mr. Mortgage Show. Are inflation and everyday expenses eating into your retirement income? Maybe you've considered a reverse mortgage and have unanswered questions like, do I still own my property? Can the bank kick me out? What happens when I die? Can I still leave my house to my kids? These are all great questions. Visit www.moreaboutreverse.com to learn more. That's www.moreaboutreverse.com. www.moreaboutreverse.com. Welcome back to the Mr. Mortgage Show. Call us now, 561-291-8569. All right, we are back. My name is Mark Itell. The, I host the Mr. Mortgage Show every week right here, same bat time, same bat channel. And I hope you have a pen handy because I want you to write this down. 561-291-8569 is the anytime hotline. And you can use that during the week if you have questions or comments that pushes to my office when we're not in the studio. So someone will be happy to answer your questions and check us out online. www.mr.mortgage. Never ever a.com. Just type in mr.mortgage. 
hit enter and you'll find us. And then also I encourage you to check out the Facebook page at The Mr. Mortgage Show. So you can search Facebook, The Mr. Mortgage Show, and you'll find the um, new and improved Facebook page where we're dropping a lot of links to all the data that you hear us reference uh, during the show. So armed with that data, you're going to make better real estate uh, decisions and mortgage decisions for you and your family. So that's our goal of the show. We had some really interesting um Question so far. So I just, before we move forward, I just kind of want to recap it. I know we started talking uh, during the first segment about where we are, right? Are we in a bubble? Is this bubble about to burst? Does buying a home now make sense? I mean, should I sell now, cash out and go live in a tent and grow vegetables in my backyard? There's a lot of people that have a lot of concern about where we are in housing, um, interest rate wise, inflation wise and uh, recession wise. So hopefully some of the questions that we cover during the show uh, answer that because they were pretty similar. But I want to dig into those things right now before we move forward. So here's one super interesting thing that nobody seems to be talking about. So as most of you know, I was originating loans since 1999. So during, through and after the bubble bursting of, you know, the the late 2010 swing there, 2008-9-10. Here's one distinct difference that nobody's talking about. Back then, adjustable rate mortgages made up over 40%. Most of them were interest-only arms. So an adjustable rate mortgage in 2006 or seven allowed you to qualify for more home than you should have ever been qualified for because they're, they were using the low introductory rate, often with an interest-only component to qualify you. So over 40% of the purchases were made with that very speculative loan product. This time, right now today, less than 1% of the purchase mortgage market is any, any arms, adjustable rate mortgages. So what happened back then was a lot of people didn't want to sell. They believed the appreciation cycle was going to continue, but those adjustable rate mortgages Um, that fixed payment period was most often two years. They adjusted, the payments went up, the interest only period expired. They couldn't afford the property. They had to sell. And here's a really interesting thing. Another, another um, component of this that people aren't talking about back then we had artificial appreciation. And by that, I mean, one person buying multiple properties and they weren't buying duplexes and fourplexes. They were going in to Black Diamond and Olympia and buying six, seven, eight hundred thousand dollar new construction homes. That's not a rental home. That's not an investment property. That's a speculative flip. But they were doing that six, seven, eight times with these adjustable rate mortgages. So when all of those arms came due, that person was in a jam. They had to dump eight properties at once, seven properties. We're not seeing that. We're seeing, you know, mom, dad, and two kids fighting to get that very first single family home for themselves. They're not buying five or six of these things. So my point in all that is there's no adjustable rate mortgages that are are going to affect people's payment. And most people own one, sometimes two properties. So there's not artificial demand. And why I'm sharing this is they can afford their homes where they are now. They were underwritten with today's interest rate. They put the down payment down. Oh, and here's another thing. Today, people are either paying cash or they're using a fixed rate mortgage product. So there's no fear of a mortgage adjusting. There's no fear of a payment increasing. They're not going to be forced to sell their property. So I throw that out there and I would love to deep dive that with anybody. Give me a shout, 561-291-8569. I'd love to have a conversation with you around that. Check out the Facebook page, The Mr. Mortgage Show, The Mr. Mortgage Show on Facebook or uh, www. Mr. Dot Mortgage. So very different fundamentals in the market. There's no big adjustment period that's going to come due and knock all these people out of their house. And lastly, they're going to lose their house last. They're going to give up the car and the credit card first. So I don't think a bubble is going to burst anytime soon. That's it. That's all I got. You hear the sirens. Thank you for spending some time with us here at the Mr. Mortgage Show. That's a wrap. Join Mark Itell next week. For more thrilling, edge-of-your-seat discussions about real estate and mortgages, right here on The Mr. Mortgage Show. 